Hey YouTube, want to do another video on the Intel Compute Stick. Uh, doing some gaming, this time running Nidhog, Nighthog, however you pronounce it. Again, this is a, a great game to play with some friends. Um, and uh, again, I'm running the Intel Compute Stick in performance mode with a USB hub attached to it. So, um, there's not many options when it comes to this game, so pretty much it's full screen or that's it. So, um, no graphical options that I know of. So what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and and, um, and start playing the game. Over to the left is the MSI Afterburner with RTSS server running with hardware info. Um, again, frame rate on top left, CPU usage, CPU core temps, uh, system memory usage, GPU usage, GPU VRAM usage. Below that is the GPU temperature and the GPU clock speed. And to the right of the GPU clock speed are the GPU, I'm sorry, the CPU uh, core clock speed for all cores. So let's go ahead and get in here and just play a game and see how well it runs. So we're looking at the uh, 30, fr ugh, 30 frames per second, however the 50, it looks like it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, well, it's pretty playable. Yeah, I mean, we're looking, it's odd, it's kind of in the 30 range, then it jumps to 50. Oh, didn't see that coming. And, um, just want to pause really quick here to take a look at this. So, frame rate, as you saw, has been in the 30s, it's jumped up to in the 60s, so pretty good. Uh, CPU temperatures uh, approaching 70C on a couple of the cores. Obviously, CPU usage is kind of, um, it looks like it's heavily single-threaded, uh, maybe dual-threaded, maybe. Uh, system memory usage is, is relatively low. Uh, GPU usage is not at 100%, but the GPU clock speed is at its max boost, which is 620 megahertz on this uh, Z3735F SoC. Uh, with Intel HD graphics. So 65C on the GPU side is relatively cool and the core clock speed um, obviously is varying because of the multiplier is changing and the turbo is kicking in on a couple cores and um, well it's just all over the place. So, But regardless the performance is re relatively good so we'll continue playing and you'll get a, an idea of how well uh, it continues to do. So some levels are more strenuous than others. This level is a little more taxing than the last, I believe, but still very playable. I mean, really, for a game like this, anything above 30, in my opinion, uh, 30 frames per second is, is playable. Can't keep doing the jump kick. Run. No. So 
This level is a little more taxing than the others. It seems like it runs at 50, then it'll go to um, 30, and then it's just... It feels like it's slowing down, but it's not really representative in the in the frame rate, which is kind of odd. And the CPU temperatures and the GPU temperatures are perfectly fine. Well, uh, well below the throttle point. This game doesn't use any video memory at all, I mean, less than 100 megabytes, so. At this point I've tested Castle Crashers as well, and it looks like the GPU um, clock speed just stays pegged at 620 megahertz, which is his max boost clock, so that's very good. So, dipping into the 30s, as you've seen, I haven't seen going anything low, below 30, so I would say this game is very playable. It would be a good pl game to play with a bunch of friends. Just pop the uh, compute stick in the back of a TV. Again, this is running in performance mode, so obviously the performance is a little better than it would be in standard mode, but um, I would say between 5 and 6 frames per second difference, so it's not a huge difference, but um, I would recommend getting a USB-powered hub. Um, if you're or USB hub, I'm sorry that that is powered. Um, if you're going to be plugging in a number of devices, um, I currently have uh, the uh, Xbox controller, uh, wireless receiver plugged in, a keyboard, a mouse, and I have an Ethernet adapter because the Wi-Fi on this thing is terrible. So, anyways, here's Nidhog, Nighthawk, however you want to pronounce it, and thank you very much.